Hello my dear tabletop friends. I'm Flo and you are watching Titus Painting Studio. Welcome to the second episode of Road to Rangers of Shadow Deep. Well, so much to choose from, I honestly don't really know where to start. Before I get into the terrain building, which I'm a bit scared of, I thought I'd show you something easier. So I chose swamp zombies, very simple mobs. Since I still had normal zombies from Mantic games lying around, I thought it would be cool to convert and modify them a little bit to make them look like they would come straight out of the swamp. Firstly, I want to show you how I converted these zombies. Secondly, you can see how I painted these swamp monsters, so have fun! I started with assembling the minis. In my opinion, these are some of the most beautiful standard zombies you can find on the market. The skulls have been around for a few years now, but for me these were the minis which drew my attention to Mantic in the first place. During the assembly I cut off the feet and parts of the lower legs to make it look like they are wading through the swamp. After the minis were assembled in the normal way, the converting started. Since some time I had seen conversions with grass tufts on Instagram under the hashtag turnit28, which I liked quite well. That's why I wanted to try it out too. Especially with swamp zombies I found it quite suitable, since they are probably overgrown with all kinds of old vegetables. The color of the grass didn't matter, because it will be painted later anyway. I glued the grass on the back and the head parts. To shell silt or something like that I also crumpled up hankies, tore them up and dipped them into a PVA glue water mixture before I put the threads over parts of the mini. I also applied some of the stuff to the area where the mini touches the base to create a swirling water effect. After gluing halved green stuff balls on the bases to create bubbles in the swamp, the last step of the conversion was done. In some places I glued some earth on the minis to get a more varied structure. Because all of the mud and all the hanging down stuff, the zombies should look as if they have been in the swamp for quite some time and have become a part of the swamp themselves. After the glue had dried, the second layer of water PVA glue mixture was applied to the earth to prevent the earth from falling down when playing games. In order not to make too many details disappear, I used a particularly diluted water PVA glue mixture. Before the primer was applied, I quickly added milliput to create a few waves on the base. As always when working with modeling clay, I took care to wet the modeling tools well, so the clay would not stick to them. Fuck. And then I finally started painting. The only reason why I primed by hand was that I wanted to save primer spray and was too lazy to go to the garden. The swarm zombies should be painted in the same color scheme as the other mobs. So I first painted the whole figures with dark muddy colors like black, brown, dark grey or olive green. It's no problem to mix the colors on the figure a little bit. The background is that later the red atmospheric light will come on the minis. The slushy dark tone will later make the red light look better because of the contrast. The base was then painted with a shiny black to represent the swamp. Originally the black was a bad buy because I wanted to have a matte black, but in some situations the shiny black is quite practical, so here too. Then I dry brushed the complete miniature with a mix of olive green and ivory. Normally I try to avoid dry brushing, but if it needs to be quick and dirty, this is of course very practical. And this is what the intermediate result looked like. After everything had dried, we continued with some black, brown and green washes to bring out the details and darken the colors. Again I just smeared the juice on the models and had no problem with the washes mixing on the figure. To highlight the grass parts a little bit and set it apart from the mini, I dry brushed some parts with an ochre tone afterwards. 
then it was finally time for the red light effect. To make a long story short, I started with a dark red, followed by a blood red and then an orange. The brighter the color became, the closer it was to the light source. So I always left some areas darker. I concentrated the effect mainly on the front part of the base, as if the red light would come out of the eyes. If you want to know more about how such atmospheric effects work, you are very welcome to have a look at the Titus Painting Tutorial 3, where I have explained everything in more detail. Soon in English too! To emphasize the eyes as the brightest part, they were first painted white and then yellow-orange. After the mini was covered with a glossy varnish, the painting was finished and the decoration with moss and resin started. First to the moss effect. Olive green turf was mixed in a cup with PVA glue and some water to a pulp. Then this moss was applied to parts of the figure and the base with a modeling spatula. Once this mixture is dry, it becomes rock hard and returns to its original color. Then it was the turn of the resin. As I said in episode 1, one of my goals for this road tour is to try out new things, which have been on my to-do list for a long time, and which I haven't really dared to do yet. Resin is one of those things. For the beginning I found UV resin quite fitting. To create splash effects I first glued transparent plastic supports to the minis. Super glue was used for that. Since some resin had already hardened in the tube and a kind of jelly had formed, I put small chunks of this jelly around the legs of the figures to represent the movement of the water. By the way, I didn't need a UV lamp because this day was very sunny. To be honest, I'm not completely satisfied with the water effects. The supposed splash effect looked more like a slimy sausage, but hey, learning by doing. And that's it for the second episode. I hope you enjoyed the video, maybe there was something useful for you too. Otherwise, stay healthy and see you next time. Bye bye!